the CIO News. I am Afreen Khan, your host for the broadcast and head of operations at CIO News. This is our exclusive fireside chat powered by Avaya on transformation through customer experience. This is a recorded session and will be available on our website, cionews.co.in and our CIO News LinkedIn handle. With a lot of excitement, I'd like to invite my guest for today, Mr. Amit Jain, who is a co-founder at Ashika Global Family Office Services. Mr. Amit Jain is a qualified investment professional in financial planning with 18 plus years of investment experience in global capital markets and BFSI industry. He is a co-founder at Ashika Global Family Office Services, where he serves family offices about $15 million for active entry and switch points across asset classes and product categories by analyzing the cyclical movement of various asset classes, global liquidity, and other macro factors. Welcome, Mr. Jain. Thank you, Afri. Thanks for the introduction. I also have along with me Ms. Monica Kataria, who is the Territory Account Manager at Avaya. Monica has been a part of the Avaya ecosystem for more than three years. She has been enabling businesses via her current role in expediting her digital transformation journey to save their customers better and transform into a cognitive enterprise. She directly leads sales efforts in strategic accounts and manages the remaining accounts in collaboration with the Avaya Partner ecosystem. Welcome, Monica. Thank you, Avaya. Great. So I think let's just begin. And uh, Ms. Jen, uh, you know, when we are, we're talking about tech technology, we're talking about experience. We know for a fact that there has been a tremendous demand for technology in the last couple of years, and it has been it has boosted because of you know the changing scenario. So how has the customer shift and transformation experience evolved in the Indian banking sector, particularly over the past few years? Absolutely a fantastic question, uh, Afreen, because I have seen the Indian banking system when I was a kid and I used to go along with my grandpa and my father to a bank. And I'll tell you the experience on those days and since then how the banking has changed in the last 15-20 years. When I used to go to a bank, for opening an account, we used to take almost a month. And today, the bank account can be opened within an hour. It's a month to an hour, not even a single day. That's how banking has changed. right? Today, I can log in into my account and take out my account statement any point of time, 24 4 by 7. But it was not the case when I was a kid. I had to go to a bank wait there for two hours in the queue and get my passbook updated for my father and then used to come back. So the banking had been very, very tough in the initial stage of Indian economy when we were probably passing through this a phase of a underdeveloped economy to a developing economy. But now, because of technology, the banking and the entire financial market has completely changed. It's a completely 360 degree turn what we can see now in the banking sector completely. Even not in the banking, I talk about every sector of the financial market, be it uh, banks, be it broking, be it life insurance, be it mutual fund. Everything has changed. And the best part of this technology is your turn around time for a customer service has cut down drastically. So from a month, it has come to an hour. And I will not be wondering if it can be reduced to a half an hour going forward as well. That's how the technology has changed the complete life of a customer experience from complete financial market perspective. Adding on to this point, if we take specific example of the broking industry, which we are part of, that today, the not the oldest broker in this market are heading the heading the NSC volume on daily basis. It's a new brokers like Zerodha, Upstock and Grow. They are leading the market with almost 40 to 45 percent market share, not the older broker like Motila Loswal or India on full line or the Kotex securities of the world. And it's only because of technology. Uh, it is important for every CIO, CEO or every business head to adopt to the technology at earliest if they wish to be ahead of the race. And that's what we have seen in these new entrepreneurs like Zerodha have taken and they have surprised the market from by miles. They have surpassed their competition by miles. So that's what the technology has built. And I think this competition is going to further get stiffer going forward. So as you have rightly said, Mr. Jain, yes, in a nutshell, it's like how the overall experience has shifted from a traditional way 
to more of a technology oriented way and you know there has been a substantial shift if we have to actually talk about it so on that note monica the next question from your end thank you abhi so mr amit of uh, one thing particularly i wanted to ask is you know what are the key factors that are driving this uh, change in this shift right and how has it impacted the traditional banking ecosystem i think there are your no, thoughts on this the yeah. only way it is being shifted because of the increasing globalization in indian economy i know that after 1991 we become a open economy where we invited uh, when we have delicensed ourselves completely right and we have given uh, new licenses of the banking to the private, new private sector players like hdfc bank and icic bank way back in 1986 and since then when there is a competition there was a competition between the psu bank which had been the only bank prior to 1996 for the indian uh, indian customers they start competing with the private sector banks and private sector bank as we all know worldwide not only in india is very much adaptable to new changes and they don't have any pressure or any bureaucracy within their banks they own, they are completely led by the performance so the the shift had come because we had newer banks which has come in into private sector and they have brought lot of efficiencies from the global world they brought lot of good practices from the from the global corporate house to india and that's how they have built up uh, in last 20 years and now this technology is these to a level where everything can be fastened up like anything for example if i go back again in 2002 2003 i still remember that we never heard of a, a a term called emis right my father used to tell my grandpa used to tell boss if you have money you buy the house if you don't have it don't buy don't take loan if you take a loan you are being uh, uh, outcasted from the society per se right and today having an emi having that loan give us lot of comfort a lot of pride it shows that i have a high, much higher itr today if bank give me a 10 crore loans it shows that i have a, a much bigger itr today to come to uh, uh, to reflect right so the entire culture has changed along with the banking in last 20 years because of this privatization what we have seen in last 20 years particularly in banking and financial uh, market space Yes. So, uh, actually, you know, you you rightly mentioned that you know the shift has not just been in the ways of working, but also because of the practices that have been brought in by the global players, and also the privatization bit out here. So, uh, in and it has actually given a rise to a new era of banking. So, in this new era, Mr. Jain, how have digital platforms and mobile banking applications contribute? I think I think the best thing which happened in India is a mobile phone. the penetration of mobile phones then number 2 the penetration of smartphones in last 10 years and the increase bandwidth of internet even in the rural market not only in delhi mumbai bangalore or chennai it is across the india you will find a large penetration of internet and broadband i think this these had been the key enablers to make this happen because of course we all know that i can access uh, to internet banking any point of time but i need to have an internet first if i want to have my internet banking only then i can go log in and take out my statement so the basic digital infrastructure and hardcore infrastructure both has improved in the indian economy in last 20 years and that had actually put a foundation for this strong up move in the entire technological innovation now these apps are extre- is extremely helpful helpful for the clients keeping a a consolidation perspective in mind today number one i can get everything within minutes on my statement i can get it on the on the finger even if it's a statement or it's a it's a pin or it's a login id or whatever i want i can get it instantly on my mobile phone number 2 that if if i talk from wealth perspective or from investment perspective earlier i used to have one portal for mutual fund investment one portal for insurance uh, for maintaining my insurance policies one portal for my equity broking account and today with increased app at least from a broking industry i'm talking about a wealth management industry i can see complete investment into one app which has changed my my experience completely i need not to hustle into login into three or four accounts and uh, and consolidate my statements right i can go into a single app to uh, say uh, anyone who is provider of it be it a kotak security or be it icici 
I just say securities or whosoever it is, and I can get my complete statement in a one way. So I think these apps are really handy from both from a wealth perspective, wealth management perspective. Also, even in the banking, I can do transaction 24 by 7. It's not that because earlier the bank's time used to be from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Now the banks are no more 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. They are 24 by 7. Through IMPS, I can transfer money any point of time. Immediately, the money can be transferred. I can make payments immediately anywhere in the world. Right? So this is what which has changed in last, particularly in last 10 years, I'll not say 20 years. In last 10 years, these payment system, uh, the way you manage your wealth, the way you manage your investments, the way you manage your uh, saving counts, everything has changed completely. And they have been a, a, a great help for the customer if, I'm to, if I take from a customer experience point of view. True that. I think uh, from, from the application usage perspective and the convenience that it actually provides the customer because there's a lot that has, that's been happening. As you rightly said, we had multiple portals for everything. There was a different portal. Now you all, you have it all in one app again, convenience, customer experience. So yes, on that note, over to you, Monica. Thanks, Sathya. So Mr. Ramit, uh, you know, another question for you. Uh, what measures have Indian banks taken to enhance customer experience and personalized services in response to the changing customer expectations? What are your thoughts on this? Now, I think that we have moved from a IT to an AI. And as we know, AI is very, very personalized, right? For example, now what, so I talk about the banking particularly or a financial market. If five, seven years back, I used to go to a bank, I was pushed for an insurance policy to, that said, you please buy insurance policy because we have a target or it is good for you or whatever it is, right? But today, now in, with the new age of banking, what I have seen is they don't push any product. They have moved from a product to an advisory approach now. They will not push you for any particular product, right? Uh, this has actually improved the customer experience on the ground. Today, if I go to a bank, they will not, first of all, cross-sell anything very in a hard way, where they will try to push or they will try to emotional blackmail me on a, on a site. They will rather ask me open-ended questions, try to understand my need, if they feel that that product may be suitable for me, then of course they will try to help me as an advisor, but not as a salesman. This is what we have seen, particularly not only in Indian banking, in entire entire Indian financial market system, we have seen that that salesman thing has gone out because now the even an AI, your app can uh, facilitate so much that uh, that that hardcore selling has moved out of the system. Number one, number two with increased use of technology, the chances of mis-selling has gone very, very low. Because five years back, seven years back, when we never used to have an app and so much of knowledge, the we humans, uh, I think the employees, I'll say, they used to do a lot of mis-selling to meet their targets. But now, today I know that I'm informed, app, these apps give me a lot of knowledge. If you go to any of the website of Zerodha or the Upstock or any broker today or Investopedia, they will talk Everything about the knowledge, first they will educate you, then probably they will talk about the product. But it was not the case five years, seven years, ten years back uh, when the people used to sell a product only to meet their targets. This experience has completely changed the banking in life, last five, seven years from a customer perspective. So the chances of mis-selling has gone very, very less because app will not mis-sell. App will help you as an advisor, as an AI. Yeah. I'll give you a lot of options for investments, but I will not push you for a particular product. And that's what the job of an AI is. And that's how the Indian banking has been changing. And changing for good. Yes. And you know, when yes. We talk about, yes. So uh, when we actually talk about the Indian banking, uh, you know, the, the scenario currently, it is also more about how the consumers mindsets have also changed over a period of time because India as a market, yes, we are more used to the conventional ways of, uh, you know, getting anything, even if, for that matter, it's going to a grocery shop and buying something, then change your approach to a more online shopping kind. It's, it's a mindset change, ultimately. So uh, in the Indian market, particularly, in your opinion, what are the key challenges that you think that Indian banks would have faced in adapting to the customer shift and transformation? And how do you think have they overcome these challenges? I think Indian bank only has one challenge. That is that 
70 percent of the population in India still stays in the rural markets. Right. That's the only challenge. Unless we have a complete physical infrastructure and digital infrastructure there, we will not be able to tap uh, those markets uh, completely. So in India, we'll find two markets. One is an Indian market, another is a Bharat market. So Bharat market is more a rural market where you'll find a completely, the people are still living in an age of 1980s. If you come to Mumbai, you'll still feel like you are in 2020s or 2030s. If you go to Himachal, you will find still in somewhere in 1990s. If you go to interior part of UP and Bihar, you'll still find 1980s still exist. So India is such a diverse country that uh, to be a unified India, I think we need to have only two things. One is physical infrastructure and second is digital infrastructure. And it is very important for the banks uh, to educate their clients with these new apps because these people who live who live in these markets they are little less educated they need little more time to handhold to use the services but once it is done i think the banks uh, will be completely free from their uh, from cost pressures because today if you go to a bank if you ask a branch manager or the cluster head in a bank if you ask them a question do you want to expand in rural market they will say yes but if you ask them you want to open an account you want to open a branch in rural market they will say no because opening a branch is not feasible, right? So only way you can penetrate into rural market is by having other channels of sales or other channel of doing a business, which is only an online banking or an app banking, right? So in a way, uh, it is a great challenge for the banks as of now to educate these customers in the rural market, number one. And number two, to get the digital infrastructure placed in those small rural villages of India uh, where we hardly find internet. Once these problems are addressed, then I'm sure uh, after this, there's no challenge for the Indian banking today. Very rightly said there, but because yes, there are, it's, it's a very polarized kind of a scenario in India, in a lot of places, of course, because, and that's how the consumption of technology also varies. And that's actually across industries and across uh, consumers. So thank you so much for sharing those inputs, Mr. Jain. And with that, we come towards the end of our session. So would you like to share any best practices or any last thoughts for our viewers? I believe uh, this change in India in last 10 years had been unprecedented. What changes we have seen in last 40 years, probably the equivalent amount of change we have seen in last 10 years, not only in technology and the entire culture of India, what we see. So it's an Indian shift completely. And I think this shift is going to continue. And we always believe when we talk to global investors, that is going to be India's time from here on. This is not only going to be a decade of India, it is going to be a century of India uh, because of four, four Ds what we talk about. Number one, demand. We have an inherent demand for any product, right? A product from a 10 rupees to a 10 lakh rupees can be sold in the Indian market, of course, to a different customer. Number two is demography. Of course, we have the, the youngest population in the world. We have 70% of our population is below 35. Uh, only thing that Prime Minister and the government need to do is that energy need to be channelized right foot in a rightful way. Right. So number two is demography, which they are working on, I'm sure. Everyone is trying their bits. Right. Number three is democracy. Today we have the largest democratic setup in the world. Right. Uh, and the world surprises that how we manage such a large population with a democratic setup, but it's a fact for India. And that is the reason the Western world has no option just to invest in India because they love democracy and they hate China and Russia from that perspective. They, they, they hate dictatorship, right? So this democracy is going to favor India by miles even going forward. So the Western world keep printing money and they'll keep investing into India. That's the future, right? And of course, the last one is uh, demand, democracy and your, your distribution network. The way we have distributed almost 200 crore doses of COVID vaccine across India I think it can be a case study in the Harvard. So we have such a strong distribution system because only product will not do anything unless you have a strong distribution mechanism on the ground. And that's what we have seen in India. So of course, keeping these four Ds in mind, I think India's economy to be here. And I think this is the economy where you have the highest growth rate in the world with the lowest inflation possible in the world. This combination is very, very rare in the world and you'll not find it anywhere else. Right? So stay in India, keep growing India. That's what we would like to pass on the message to every every viewer who is viewing this YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Mr. Jain.
Thank you, Mr. Jen. And uh, Monica, would you like to add anything from your end? I think Mr. Ramit pretty much covered everything. And in fact, I, in fact, little uh, uh, by the fact that you know he recognized this thing. India has this demand, and there are multiple layers of demographic. That we can offer so many things to this country, and then with the you know we are the right time of change. So let's be in this country and witness that and be a part of that growth. So I thank Mr. Ramit. You know you're part of that growth, and in fact, we also want to be you know. We want to uh, bring that change to our technology. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yes, Thanks, absolutely, Monica. Thanks, Afri.